Brian Johnson is a biohacker who spends $2 million per year trying to reduce his biological age. After selling his company Braintree Venmo for $800 million in 2013, Brian has dedicated himself to his new startup Blueprint, which so far seems to be an experiment he's conducting on himself with the goal of significantly slowing down his speed of aging. To do this, Brian has implemented a bunch of lifestyle changes, like eating a vegan diet, daily exercise, applying sunscreen, tracking sleep on WHOOP, doing a ton of tests like MRIs and blood work, taking over 100 pills every day including supplements, experimental longevity medication, and hormones like testosterone and human growth hormone. The whole thing is supported by a team of 30 people, led by Dr. Oliver Zolman, who designed the Blueprint program and whom I will discuss a bit later in this video. Now before I get all critical into why I think Blueprint is slightly misleading and potentially harmful, I want to acknowledge the things that I like about it. I think Brian's overall philosophy is solid advice. Basically, we should align our actions with the goals that we're trying to achieve. And self-destructive behaviors that hinder progress, like social media addiction or junk food, should be minimized or completely eliminated. I also really respect Brian's insane commitment to improving his health. It seems like he's in really great shape and just genuinely happy. And I mean, isn't that something that we're all striving for? However, things are never just black and white. Blueprint is marketed in a sort of hyped up, misleading way, using some questionable claims and not really being transparent about the science. Blueprint is designed to achieve perfect biomarkers and to slow your speed of aging as much as possible. Mine, for example, has been slowed by the equivalent of 31 years. I now age at a speed slower than the average 10-year-old. I now age at a speed slower than the average 10-year-old. Although it is cleverly constructed to seem like they're being transparent and open source because of all the information that's published on Brian's website. And this is what's making me doubt the true intentions of Brian and his team. So in this video, I want to go over three reasons why I think we should be skeptical about Blueprint and similar companies like it. Let's get the obvious issue with Blueprint out of the way first. Blueprint's contribution to advancing science is for the most part insignificant because of its complexity and the sample size of one. The only participant in the experiment is Brian. This makes any measured effects on his body, no matter how many tests you do, impossible to quantify because there simply aren't enough research participants to make the results statistically relevant. In addition, in addition to this, Brian is implementing way too many changes to his lifestyle at the same time, from diet, exercise and sleep management to experimental medication and blood transfusions. Therefore, deducing reliable conclusions about the effects of those lifestyle changes on Brian's health is very difficult. Correlation does not imply causation, especially when we're dealing with so many variables. For example, Brian is taking two promising anti-aging experimental drugs, metformin and rapamycin. Have these two drugs led to Brian's alleged age reversal and reduced speed of aging? Or is it the established life extending guidelines like doing exercise, eating more veggies and improved sleep quality doing all of the work? Because of the way Blueprint is designed, it's really impossible to say. I don't think that the insights from Blueprint are completely useless. If Brian's team got truly remarkable results, which hasn't happened so far, by the way, I think that would be very exciting for further investigation. But what could really extend the lives of people today would be a better understanding of aging biology, especially the effects of experimental drugs in clinical trials. Of course, this isn't helpful for the majority of us. We want advice that we can implement implement on ourselves right now. But people with Brian's net worth could, in theory, help fund a major clinical trial. For example, there's a trial called TAME, short for Targeting Aging with Metformin. Metformin, which is also part of Blueprint, is a drug that has so far been used to treat diabetes, but several animal studies on mice and worms suggest that it could delay aging. Metformin studies in humans have so far had less promising results, but 
more research is needed to really understand how it affects the aging process. TAME is trying to do exactly that with a double-blind clinical trial on 3,000 people. Unfortunately, TAME has so far raised 11 million of the 42 million they need for this trial, despite raising funds and developing the study since 2016. If someone like Brian Johnson were to donate and help kickstart a trial like TAME, in a few years we wouldn't just have a better understanding of aging, but also more evidence to support any product that Blueprint might sell down the line. What Blueprint and the media company that's marketing it are doing instead is creating huge hype around unapproved, potentially harmful lifestyle changes under the guise of being data-driven and the pretense of doing this for the betterment of humanity. And I just think this is misrepresenting the truth and is an exploitative way to sell products in the future. The second point I want to discuss is iatrogenic harm to Brian's health and to anyone who starts following blueprint protocols, especially taking the experimental drugs and supplements. So what is iatrogenic harm? Iatrogenic harm is harm that's caused by medical care and it can be the result of overtreatment and adverse effects from drug interactions. So let's talk about the supplements and meds that are part of Blueprint for a bit. Many of the supplements are likely to be harmless or have little effect. For example, collagen, a really popular supplement that is claimed to rejuvenate hair, skin, and nails. However, studies that support these claims without a conflict of interest are lacking. Other supplements are good for treating deficiencies like vitamin D3 that I'm personally also taking because I don't go in the sun much, or stuff like hem iron polypeptide that's used to treat iron deficiencies. More questionable parts of Blueprint are the hormones like human growth hormone and testosterone. Brian claims that he has a low level of testosterone because of his calorie restricted diet, which is why he decided to go on testosterone replacement therapy. Now, obviously going on testosterone replacement therapy can have positive effects. You can basically get ripped more easily, increase bone mass, muscle mass, mobility, fix things like erectile dysfunction and libido. How However, according to a 2021 annual review, long-term effects of testosterone are not really well understood yet. Studies suggest that replacement therapy causes adverse effects in older men. There is solid evidence that it promotes the growth of prostate cancer. But the long-term harm and relationship with longevity isn't really well understood. Then we've got HGH, short for human growth hormone, which Brian claims he's taking to regenerate his thymus. Thymus being a gland that has an important role in the development of the immune system. With age, as growth hormone levels drop, the thymus gradually shrinks, causing a decline in immune function, which may be partly why older people experience slower wound healing healing and are more susceptible to infections. There seems to be a kind of trade-off situation with human growth hormone here. On the one hand, taking the growth hormone can regenerate the thymus, maybe prevent this decline in immune function, but on the other hand, my studies show that lower growth hormone levels are actually what increases longevity. Growth hormone is not well studied as an anti-aging treatment, and like I said before, supplementing it may even increase the speed of aging. It can also cause a range of really bad side effects like joint pain, fluid retention, and carpal tunnel syndrome. My point here is that using these hormones and claiming that you're doing this for longevity and especially mixing so many things together is highly experimental and there isn't enough transparency on how experimental this is in the media that Blueprint publishes. We just had too much, too many carrots. Mm -hmm. And so that showed up in our, in our measurement. And so how now- did you know it was the carrots? I forget the, tra the tracks we had I also have my doubts about Oliver Zulman, the doctor who is leading the Blueprint project. Looking at his credentials, he's a 29-year-old graduate of King's College London who does not have a license or registration to practice medicine due to not completing hospital training. He states this in fine print on his website. He's not a published researcher, nor does he seem to have any experience in designing an experiment like Blueprint. And I am not pointing this out to discredit him in any way. I'm 
I'm just questioning how ethical it is for a doctor to prescribe all of these drugs for such extremely experimental use and then promote this program to the public without disclosing the reality of things. This leads me to my final point, which is the reality of what Blueprint is versus how it's advertised. In every podcast and interview I could find on Brian, he keeps talking about one thing. Data, 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 da the data, data. And data is a very powerful word. People want something to believe in, something tangible. And who can argue with data? Just mentioning this word makes whatever you say afterwards very convincing. However, as I discussed earlier, data doesn't really mean much in a study with 300 plus variables and one participant. Also, some of the biomarkers and measurement that Brian uses to claim that he has reduced his biological age are kind of inaccurate. For example, on his website, he shows that his levels of NAD, an enzyme in our cells that seems to decrease with age, went down from those of a 42 year old to those of a 16 year old. What seems Seems like an amazing 26 year drop of biological age. So how did Brian achieve this result? Well, by taking a supplement called NMN that boosts NAD levels. And we don't quite know yet if decreased NAD levels actually cause the diseases associated with aging like cancer, or if lower NAD levels are just the correlation with age, like gray hair that is basically just a side effect of aging. If you want to know more about this, I recommend watching Andrew Steele's video on it. Blueprint is interesting, but ultimately for Brian, it's another business opportunity. Absolutely nothing wrong with looking for business opportunities. However, his stated purpose of Blueprint doesn't really match what I think they're gonna release as a product later. All of the publicity around Blueprint, the hyped results, the free sharing of the protocols are just a way to get people interested in the product, which I think will probably be some kind of app. We can already see some traces of what's to come on the Longevity School website, which is Dr. Zolman's educational consulting program that will allow you to measure aging using 500 plus Zolman clocks. Zolman clocks, I'm assuming, are his own iteration of scientifically established Horwath clocks. Also, on Dr. Zolman's personal website, it seems as if he was trying to open rejuvenation clinics, which are just controversial on their own, and I could make a whole video about the quackery associated with them. Do not get me wrong, I am not criticizing them monetizing olive oil or an app or chocolate. What I am criticizing are the false claims of anti-aging when this is all still just very experimental. Ultimately, I don't think that companies like this deserve our money because their goal isn't to educate people on the science or to advance the field of aging biology or to really extend our lives. Their goal is to make money. And I don't think that we need to pay for an app or go to a rejuvenation clinic in order to get all the benefits of the boring stuff like exercise, diet, and quality sleep. Anyways, I'd love to hear what you think of Blueprint. Please try to be constructive and polite in your criticism or praise because I really don't support sending any hate Brian's way, especially not the elaborate discussions on his appearance that I've seen in the comments of some videos. We're here to talk about science and health and not diagnose someone based on how they look on camera. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to see more science discussions like this and I'll see you in the next one.